third uh, webinar. Um, um, what we're going to be focusing on today is communicating with the domestic market uh, in terms of how to uh, reach and connect with them in terms of our messaging and whatever communications we may put into the marketplace. So um, the shape of the session, well, before we go into the shape of this one, we'll talk about what we've done in the previous sessions. I think it's just a recap of where we were at. Um, so we started out in our first webinar talking about the strategy for the domestic market more broadly, um, and we looked at uh, the consumer sentiment to try to understand the market. And in particular, we spent quite some time looking at the overall segment. So really, our, our, our first webinar was more about the broad strategy and really trying to build uh, an understanding and insight into the uh, key customer segments that are that exist within the market that we could potentially target. I think logic then uh, brought us to the second webinar where we talked about experience development. Um, and this was again linking our insight into the segments to say, well, what are we actually going to offer them in terms of experiences? Um, because obviously our capacity to influence segments uh, to be attracted towards the region is predicated on the quality of the experiences that we can deliver, everything from food to accommodation to attractions to events, should they be taking place and so on. Um, and we also had George from uh, TNI who would have helped us and give some thoughts around about the ability or the capacity for us to align our experiences with the broader Embrace a Giant Spirit brand, but also probably in a practical way, some of the very important things around some of the key supports that are available uh, in terms of sector expertise, in terms of uh, experience, the experience development process. So uh, as and when members of the industry are investing, whether it be time or money, or people into experience development were aware of some of the uh, supports uh, and some of the advisory elements that are available that can help us or uh, help industry to develop really compelling, uh, I suppose, brand aligned consumer centric experiences that will give us some level of competitive advantage or appeal and drive overall consideration. So that's what, that's what we've worked on thus far. Uh, it's logical, I think, that the webinar three and the final webinar would deal with communications. So the logic here is, is that if we know strategically what we're going to do, we know the uh, consumers that we want to attract the most, we're clear in the experiences that we need to build. The other, the front end of the sphere is obviously going to be communicating effectively to these, to these audiences. So we can build fantastic experiences, great food offerings, we can uh, evolve our accommodation, whatever it might be. We can package it all up, we can create itineraries, but if we fail to communicate effectively, and um, then we will do a disservice to all the work that has gone before. So this session is going to be about uh, effective communications. It's probably going to be a slightly higher level in terms than the experience development one because um, we are, we're not going to be necessarily right now in the forensic details of how to communicate, what channels to use, etc. with the segments. There is work going on actually in the new year that's going to overlay more information in terms of being directive around about how to communicate. But Naomi will talk about that a little bit later on in, in, in this webinar. So um, what we're going to cover today is uh, I'm going to take you through the first two items. So I'm going to talk about the domestic strategy in the context of communications and give you some perspectives, some information on the key initiatives that are in train. And hopefully there are some content inside that can trigger your thinking or Thing here is, is that we remind ourselves of what they are interested in and how they're gathered in information because that's the magic equation in terms of communications really relevant content and um, communicated in the right place at the right time in the right way is the is, is the is the, uh, the, the the kind of a perfect equation and um, Naomi will then talk about the broader communications agenda give you a sense of some overview, overview of what's going on from a marketing perspective some of the supports available and then Tanya will talk about some of um, some of the more recent communications uh, that have taken place. And then we will uh, we'll stop and we'll, we'll open up for conversation or questions that, that you guys have. OK. So, you know, we've talked about this. Each of the. You probably if you've been on the other two, you know, there's four pillars. We've talked about the uh, experience pillar. Uh, there's an industry stakeholder and engagement, which is actually live what we're doing now. This is about industry engagement and, and dialogue. 
And the other dimension we haven't touched on, but it's there, it's present, is how we engage people within the local community and citizens in terms of their own, in their own domestic tourism product and experiences. The logic here being is that the more pe the people of a particular region or destination are A, motivated by, B, proud of, and C, active in uh, the um, delivery of tourism experiences, the better that will be within re regions because it'll become much more authentic, much more real, much more sustainable. Um, uh, so all of that stuff, so, but we're not dive delving into that. We're, for this session, we're in the top left-hand box and we're talking about our uh, stance on how we communicate effectively. So that's where we'll be, we, where we'll be spending uh, our time. So um, let's look at the sort of the, the, the communications in the, in the context of the overall domestic strategy. Uh, that's been that's been put in place and is available. Um, well, like all other elements, we have a overarching objective, and it is not designed to be complex or clever <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. It's designed to be very, very um, direct and instructive. And the objective here really is to do what we need to do, and that's to deliver effective communications that resonate with and influence the domestic audience to take a holiday or a short break in Northern Ireland. That's what we need to do. But that may sound very basic, but the key thing here is to take. So it's not just about driving consideration, it's it's about driving conversion and action. We know that there may be some level of inertia around about uh, taking domestic breaks, um, but we have now is no better time than ever than to try and break that inertia, principally because on a, on a kind of push factor, um, large part people don't really have the alternative to go uh, outside of Northern Ireland or at least outside the island of Ireland um, and therefore we might have a captive audience so our sense of it is from a communications perspective and we didn't weren't obviously aware of this when we were doing the actual strategy but it has happened through the pandemic that now we have a very strong captive audience and um, probably time that now is the time put forward the best that Northern Ireland has to offer and to really convince people that this is an amazing place to take a holiday, have a short break and have a really fantastic experience. And if we can communicate that now and we can deliver that now, and also if you think about the, the pent up demand and the degree to which people are really dying for some sort of recreational breaks, if uh, you know you, you guys within the Fermanagh District Council region can really communicate well, deliver an experience well, I would suspect that logically in the future you'll get return, repeat visitation, positive word of the mouth. So coming out of all of this, when the you know when the, when the dark clouds all go away and things they go back to a sense of normality, there is going to be there is right now and into the future a big opportunity to really position uh, Northern Ireland generally, but from our own district in the context of you know a really great place to take a short break and um, or, or take a holiday. So. Communicating effectively now into the future is going to be really, really important. Nearly as important as the experience we deliver, but obviously when we communicate, we have to deliver on what, what our promises are. But that's the overall objective. Let's break the inertia, let's get people to take the breaks, let's get people to have the experiences and really do that for, for our perspective on a, on a regional basis and move beyond the known destinations and start to drive penetration into our offering, which is maybe considered slightly regional. The key initiatives that underpin that, I mean, some of them are, are quite obvious, but it's worth um, <clears throat> focusing ourselves on them. And again, this isn't necessarily designed to be, you know, massively clever. It's about just being very direct. And the first thing to say is with our communications is that we now that we know and have a knowledge and awareness and understanding of what the consumer or the priority segment passion points are, uh, and we'll touch on them again in this session, but we covered them off in the both the other sessions. Well, we need to lock into them. We need to to drive relevance and to drive interest and drive consideration is to really communicate uh, on the on people's terms. The content needs to be focused on what they are interested in, what they are motivated by, uh, their outlook, uh, their wants, their needs. But we know that we have insight into that. We've done the work in order to do that. So now is the time to really leverage those things. And I would say it has much about them and it is about us. So I think we have to walk away from the days that, you know, I, I always use the example where you go onto a, a website and you're greeted with, you know, 20 pictures of the conference hall in a, in a hotel or, or accommodation provider. And you're thinking, why as a family, that's completely irrelevant to me. But if we've known, understand that, say, for example, the aspiring families, what they want to do is have 
um, quality time in which they can connect with their children and we know the experiences they're interested in, then that should dictate or direct or really influence what we communicate. And this is really about focus. It's about not a single solitary pound being wasted in communications because everything is very well pointed, is very well tailored, is very well focused on what we know our seg the segments want. What this means in practical terms, it may not necessarily mean doing anything radically different than you have done before, but if you have a clear focus on the segment, well, then you can start to interpret that particular segment through key lenses. What does it mean in terms of accommodation and we, what we communicate in our accommodation in terms of what it is, its price points, how it's wrapped and packed with other offers? What does it mean in terms of food and drink? So we've talked about this kind of ad nauseum about the importance of food and drink and as it acts as a kind of proxy for the quality of the tourism offering within a destination. So communications that don't in part talk about that or sometimes hero that um, may, be, may be, you know, lacking because they're not hitting all, all the notes. Probably particular strength in terms of your region. How do we talk about and position our outdoor and natural environment offering uh, within our communications? And how do we really leverage all of those assets from an experience and a natural environment point of view to give us standout relative to but there is a uniqueness certainly uh, within I think the Vermont Omen district in particular that can be leveraged and enhanced. Uh, the question of how do we position and communicate whole family activities if the family is a particular segment for us, how to communicate that that is there present and get people, let people imagine and understand what's there. How do we communicate soft adventure, particularly probably for the, uh, uh, the uh, quality seekers, you know, so how do we do that? And maybe less relevant to us and maybe less relevant now would be the question of urban culture and nightlife. But certainly we do need to communicate or give a sense of what happens when the sun goes down, what happens in the wee hours of the evening, that people understand what they can do. That might be linked to food and drink, it might be linked to other things. But again, we can't leave that out. So we can't give people the impression that really well there's daylight, you can have, you can do things, but as soon as the sun goes down, you can't. So we need to think about that. Um, within this, um, there is a big opportunity and Naomi will talk about it is to, to leverage the experience brand Embrace the Giant Spirit. So that's going to be central to future communications and there will probably be significant investment in that platform. So from a communications perspective, um, we need to kind of leverage and nuance that uh, experience brand. So it's really attuned to, um, to, to the domestic market. So in some ways there is a job for TNI and, uh, and other uh, entities to do there. But also as an operator, as industry, there's you have to ask yourself the question of what's the opportunity for me to engage in and leverage the experience branch of my communications or align myself with that, <clears throat> because there will be quite a lot of momentum around that. And what we'd say is, is that it's really about how can we think through our local experiences or the offering that we have within our region? How does that bring Embrace a Giant Spirit to life? What does it do? How can we be, how can Fermanagh and Oma then within that district be a hero within the Embrace of Drying Spirit brand and really fight for presence and visibility in the context of the brand and get featured. Uh, so it is communicated, you know, across uh, Northern Ireland. It has resonance. It is part of the bigger picture, but it just really showcases what we have as the epitome of the experience brand at its best in action. So this may not be immediately easy. It may take consideration. Uh, it may take thought, but it is about the convergence of how we're developing our experiences and how that then ladders up to communications. And if there is connectivity between the work and the experience development work that you're doing and how that can feed into the experience brand, well, there's, there's a win-win there to be had for all parties. So it's worth, worth absolutely considering that if we are focused on segment-led passion points within our communications that really leverage and embrace um, the, the overarching experience brand, that's probably a very strong equation to communicate effectively and to communicate more broadly, drive the consideration, drive the demand, drive the conversion is what it'll all be about. Um, a second point, and there's only three points within this, but again, this will take some thought um, about how we do it, is to think about how, what channels we use and what content we use in our communications and, and almost reappraise them to a certain extent. One of the big things that we know, and we'll probably know more about this in the new year when uh, more, more additional work is done, is, is that 
you know, the consumer is relying less and less on traditional channels and TV and radio and press, maybe to a lesser extent, for information relating to short breaks and holidays within Northern Ireland. So they're far more to, as, as they always have been, but they are very likely to act on personal recommendations. They have much greater emphasis on online reviews, much greater emphasis on user-generated content and key social media platforms. Now, this won't come as any surprise to you, but maybe when we show some of the information around the segments, the degree to which the focus has shifted to online reviews, to user-generated content, to social media, to search, all these sort of things. I mean, the degree that's shifted is, is very, very significant. And I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is, where are we on that journey? Are we the best that we can be very, very well be? Have we dipped our toe in the water? What are we doing? What is it? Because I guess not having a digital effort is a bit like having a, you know, half a communication strategy. Um, and, you know, I, the old saying, if you only do what, you, what you've always done, you'll only get what you've always had, isn't even true anymore when it comes to communications. I would say if you do what you've always done on the communications basis, you won't even get what you had in the past. So really the shift in channel utilization is, is pretty monumental. It's very, very significant. You'll be highly aware of it. And I don't know you guys as businesses, but I imagine that you're engaged in already. The question is, how do we step it up even further? How can we really, really leverage that? And there are resources available in order to do that. Um, the other thing to say is, is that from a content perspective, there is a real need to probably reframe or re-articulate uh, what, we, what we have to offer. And it's maybe less true for your region because there is still originality and new news and what you have to offer. But, um, you know, the presentation of tourism icons that have been there in the past probably need to be reinterpreted. One of the things we found when we did the work with the domestic market and with the consumer is, is that they thought they knew things about the, like, you know, you know, the tourism icons. They said, oh, I know what that is. I can expect what that's like. Um, and that might talk to some of the more established uh, tourism experiences, but there are established tourism experiences within your region. The question is, how do we reframe them to people who feel like they have, are either familiar with them or already have experienced them, or maybe haven't experienced them, but think they can, they are very, can predict what it's going to be like? How do we disrupt and get them to reinterpret what we had to offer? What's the new expression of from Anna Lake What's the new expression of uh, our, you know, our outdoors offering? What's our new expression of our fantastic food offering? And um, there's a real need to rethink our communications to maybe take some small levels of risk in terms of surprising um, the consumer and uh, driving their awareness and um, their attention in terms of what we've got to offer. And um, so, you know, set against the, this background, it's really important that all this is considered and really we take a long look at how and where we're communicating, but really challenge ourselves to say, is what we're communicating relatable? Is it relevant? Is it contemporary? Is it on point? Are we getting to the, the domestic audience at the right time, the right place? And the other thing as well is, is that, you know, the context of COVID-19 and the fact that, you know, the domestic destination now is probably alongside the Republic of Ireland, the destinations that you can be choose, that's on point. That needs to be talked about to a certain Connor? There's a destination and you guys Sorry, yeah. Connor, you just dropped out there for a minute. So you're back in now though. But... I'm back now. Will yeah, I keep going yeah. or do you need to go back? Um maybe if you just finish off that last um point uh, there. Just, yeah. yeah. Just I was more summarizing that we need to make sure that uh, we're in the right place with relatable content and really ask ourselves the hard questions around if it is my communications content or is it what I'm messaging really right, really on point, and is it working? So more than that. And then I was saying, look, this is not designed to be too comp uh, conceptual, but there's a destination and then there's a big idea linked within that destination linked to the experience brand. So something that from Anna and Omer in the district, that particular district is famous for within the context of the experience brand. And then we need to maybe at an industry level think about 
what's the local standard experience that we've got or I have? What is it? What is it that's going to be different and better and new? What's the off the beaten track experience? We know nearly all segments are looking for something unique and different. Uh, and a big thing about breaking inertia is giving people access to things that they haven't seen before or they think are, are kind of uh, outside, you know, off the beaten track and new and different experiences. And then what's what's our new news? What's new and unique? What is our local gem? Because I think I said this the other day, a lot of what happens is on a regional basis, things that we take for granted on a broader kind of uh, Northern Ireland basis are considered local gems to put them forward. And then to close that out, what we need to ask ourselves from a communications perspective is, if I know what these things are, I have a sense of what they are, what are my segment led proof points? So if I'm after the families or I'm after natural quality seekers, or I'm after uh, social Instagrammers, what, what, what do they need? What proof points am I dialing up in my communications that they go, yes, that's the type of food I want, or that's the type of experience I want, or I see they've got really strong uh, environmental and sustainability credentials. So we need to be in sometimes in the big idea, but also in the detail, those little trigger points that say that's right for me. And this is hopefully a helpful kind of structure that can really make help you prioritize and make decisions around about the content that you'll put put on your websites, any paid for communications, any social media work you might do, whatever it might be that really help to uh, really give a strong lens in terms of what you want to communicate. So um, the other thing alongside this is is there's a couple of practical things here as well, is to look at the local marketing digital footprint. So I know there's a, you, you have resources, and I think Karen is an agency in place to support that, but you know, make sure that's really right. And it's dynamic as well, it's not static. So change is good when it comes to communications. So, and, and one of the things here we need to be continually kind of refreshing and evolving and maybe rotating is ideas around place to eat and drink and things to do. That's, they're, they're key, obviously, they're basics, but they're key. But the more they have dynamism, the more they're segment led, the better. And also, it's a it's a table stake and something, something we shouldn't forget about. There is that substantiation and that proof point of how easy and convenient it is to take a, a, a short break within Northern Ireland. So again, people know the, the geography to a certain extent, but it's no harm in saying it's X number of hours or X number of miles. Or you can be there, you know, within, you know, just after breakfast or whatever it might be. So the convenience of getting places both in terms of the destination plus moving around the destination if everything is in you know, your arm's length in terms of experiences that needs to be dialed up it's a very functional dimension but it is important and allows people to in their own minds really uh, define what their, uh, their their overall experience could be like and how easy it will be to to have that experience okay. uh, the third and final one is particularly relevant to you guys is developing people's uh, knowledge of the regional offer so the truth of it is, and you know this, is that uh, you know Northern Ireland residents have a gap in their knowledge and they don't have the depth and breadth that we would like them to. Um, and we know from the first webinar, we had a look at the level of knowledge with respect to, uh, you know, for Manoma uh, district area. And it's not bad, but it's not as good as others. So there really is room for, room for, for improvement. Um, and within this, sometimes the way that we can drive knowledge is to reinforce the things that they know about but dial up the things they don't know about. So it does kind of take their attention. But all the time, you know, aware knowledge is key to conversion. So the question we have to ask ourselves is what do they know? What do they not know? And what do we do about that? And how can we make them more informed and more knowledgeable? And that can be through communications, can be through word of mouth, can be through various uh, uh, channels and, uh, and different points. But again, it's about really doubling down on developing the region, regional offer. So, what we had to do in this is is it is a delivered Connor, I think we're losing you again here. Yeah, you're gone, Connor, if you can hear me. as well can you hear me now and just yeah you're just back there now connor yeah i'm gonna move i'm gonna move to try and okay get my location. no problem um so sorry guys technical gremlins I know. if i move i might be better able to take the camera off
Is that a, how are we doing now, Karen? Yeah, can hear you anyway and can see the presentation. Okay, yeah, I've, oh. ta I've taken the camera off just to try and make sure there's not too much of a drain on the on the on the Wi-Fi. So no we problem. Can keep going, but it, yeah. Okay, so I was just saying again that making that point around about what we might consider a local gem might be, uh, or might, might what we might consider might be established attraction, maybe a local gem. So we can't be afraid to to to, to dial that up in an offering. Okay, so just really quickly, I'm going to talk to you about the segment. So if you go to the bottom right and when you look at what people are actually doing in terms of gathering information and where communications need to be um, put in place or resolved, you look at the natural quality seekers, all you can see here, what we I do most of my short break research online, so that's obviously hugely important. Um, Google is my first port of call, so SEO is going to be really important within that. And again, ratings and reviews are very important as well. So and maintaining them are really important. The other thing I draw your attention to is if you go to the left hand side and you look at what they're in travel, what they'll travel for. This just then dictates uh, our understanding of what we need to communicate, what's going to resonate with them from a content and an image point of imagery point of view. So it's about knowing these things. Uh, there'll be more, you know, we're going to deepen our information in terms of channel usage uh, in the new year. But for now, I think you can take a really strong direction around the importance of, of digital online. Because you see, if you go into aspiring families, you really get the same thing here as well. And um, we have an understanding on the left hand side of what they're traveling for. So again, content and, and imagery uh, direction there. But again, researching online, Google, uh, do a lot of research in detail. But again, it's slightly here again about the, the bo their booking behaviors as well in terms of presence within channels and how we might communicate. So in terms of the use use of, you know, booking.com and, and, and different platforms like that uh, in terms of aspiring families. And again, we see the same pattern for social Instagrammers. If you just look at the, their online presence here, uh, it's very, very high and then their, their, their capacity to use uh, online booking agents um very very high as well so again in terms of how we communicate or where we want our offerings to show up and how we want to be present we know one of the key battlegrounds it's not the only one but it is a key battleground in terms of actually drawing attention to our destination positioning in it and communicating it effectively okay so i'm going to um pass over to naomi now um is that okay with you naomi yes thanks I'll, I'll, can you, you drive I can drive, so you just keep prompting me. I'll go on mute. Okay. And you tell me when you're ready to move on. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Connor. Um, first of all, thank you, everyone, for the opportunity to join you today. Um, as Connor said in the introduction, um, first of all, I, I'd like to um, share with you so, some of the latest insights we're seeing in our consumer um, research. Um, uh, relevant particularly to the domestic market here in Northern Ireland. Update you a little bit on our campaigns and um, some of the supports available to you as well. So Connor, if you wouldn't mind um, forwarding on, please. Thanks, Connor. So um, just a, a note of caution around the, the research that I'm going to send you through, and that is the context in which it was conducted. So um, as you know, we have been doing regular um, waves of consumer research in both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland um, since the um, outbreak of COVID-19. So the list, this um, presentation, I'm going to cover some of the Northern Ireland domestic market um, findings coming through when field work was in from the end of October to mid November. So of course at that point um, infection rates were rising and um, unfortunately we were looking at yet another um, four week initially considered period of lockdown and um, hitting the 1000 mark in, in the death toll. So um, really quite, quite a, a for us, so Connor. Um, and unsurprisingly, perhaps in, in that period, um, people's levels of stress and anxiety um, around um, COVID had increased. And you can see there how people felt anxious and concerned um, uh, about about this situation. So, um, you know, 46% occasionally concerned, 25% frequently, and 17% 
all the time feeling stressed and anxious um, over the period. So safety and reassurance uh, are still going to be vital going forward. Connor, if you could push on again. And, you know, we, we know that won't switch off over overnight. Um, and again, as we saw, perhaps when we first um, came out of lockdown. One of the um, first opportunities was around day trips um, because if you look to the left there, 42% um, feeling absolutely at ease in, in taking a, a day trip in Northern Ireland, whereas 33% um, uh, feel currently at that time um, comfortable in taking an overnight stay or, or longer. Um, unsurprisingly, we can see outdoor attractions at, at 38%. Um, Connor mentioned the importance uh, of food and drink to the domestic market. Um, restaurants and cafes, however, and eating in just had 31% um, of people feeling at ease doing that. So again, the importance of that reassurance coming through because we need to improve that confidence. Um, Connor, if you wouldn't mind going forward, please. So, um, as as we have consistently seen uh, since COVID, um, people feel at ease, most at ease with outdoors uh, activities, and we do need to dial those up in our communications generally. Um, so, from that perspective, whether it's walks and forest trails, mountain hikes, visiting nature reserves, cycling, um, you can see good levels. People are, are absolutely uh, at ease with that. But if you go on to the next slide, please, Connor. When it comes to indoor activities, um, people are absolutely much more um, nervous about that uh, at this point. So um, you look at um, historic houses and castles there at 27%, um, adventure centres indoors 21%, spas at 6 so much more nervous about um, indoor activity. So anything where we do need to and want to portray indoor activities, we should focus on spaciousness because the research shows that people feel most comfortable when they can see they can socially distance um, when they are indoors. So Connor, if you move on, please. So in terms of, of what are the key triggers, because as Connor said, it's all about getting um, people to book when the time is right. Um, so safety and security and reassurance specifically related to COVID-19 is the first and foremost most now. So obviously, as Connor said, not part of the um, thinking when the strategy was initially done. Accommodation costs then come next. So people are looking for value for money in the destination. You can see that coming through in the more general sense in the third. Um, but also then the availability of options for eating in and out are again coming through in terms of, of the importance. Um, Connor, if you want to um, on. So it is really vital that, that we provide reassurance. So the research shows us um, that the We're Good to Go certification um, is absolutely building confidence with 92% um, in this latest, latest set of researching. It, it gives people confidence. Um, also in terms of our communications as well as how we run businesses when they're um, reopened. Um, in our communications showing um, face masks, um, one of the nuances that came through in the research were people find the face mask slightly more reassuring than the visors. Um, but wearing a face mask and providing multiple hand washing and hand sanitizer locations, again, um, the research shows would provide reassurance. So again, Connor, moving forward. Um, value for money um, is seen as a key strength for Northern Ireland, and this also came through as part of the domestic review, um, particularly compared to the Republic of Ireland. So again, um, as well as safety in our communications, we um, should always highlight not only the high quality standards, but also the reasonable price, um, because Northern Ireland really does provide great value for money as, as a tourism 
destination, particularly when you see when you compare the 47% for Northern Ireland and um, compared to the 31% for the Republic of Ireland. So um, from that perspective, um, it's always worth um, emphasizing that in our communications. So again, Connor. And again, with a large proportion of holidays um, abroad um, not taking place, 54% of those weren't rescheduled, um, but 15% of those people decided to take a break in Northern Ireland said instead. So as, as we um, reopen again, there is an opportunity um, in the spring to convert to Northern Ireland breaks. So where people would have um, considered booking a holiday abroad and we know very often that planning starts in the new year and um, if we start early to convert them to Northern Ireland breaks instead. So Connor if you want to move to the next one please. OK, and in terms of what the consumer researchers are saying um, will be effective encouraging people to take those overnight stays, um, exclusive packages um, and options for eating in and out, as well as again, safety reassurance coming through accommodation discounts and again dialing up the activities uh, and the attractions in, in the area. So some of the packages that was coming through in the research search that people felt could be useful would be stay two nights, get a free evening meal, free access to attractions of staying overnight, for example, um, staying three nights for the price of two, etc. Those were the um, sort of um, packages that they felt would encourage overnight stays. Because again, what we saw in the domestic review was in the domestic market, we need to um, give people reasons to stay overnight as opposed to um, maybe just taking a, a day trip. So Connor, if you want to move forward, please. Again, in terms of when are people going to go? So at that point, the research was showing um, people intending to take a short break in Northern Ireland. And the, the really encouraging point is 21%. Even then, we're planning to take a short break in Northern Ireland and um, they're thinking about sort of March and April but the key thing is um, we need to a have our holiday packages ready and our offering ready for then but we know people start planning very often in January February in the new year so it, it's about being ready with your communications so we want to move forward Connor um, in terms of the campaign that we held throughout the summer um, you you will have seen um, I hope the the numbers on, on the ground um, the research shows that it performed incredibly well and the awareness of the Embrace the Giant Spirit brand is building and really get some good traction um, we also have seen that um, we're good to go reassures and the campaign can the fun and the variety of things to see and do. So I suppose um, just to take you through some of the thinking, Connor mentioned absolutely the um, importance of um, providing detailed information. And again, this came up in the um, domestic review to help people plan, build their knowledge of what they need to do, where they can stay and where they can eat. So this is just one example of some press that we've done that actually um, tries to do so you, you'll see a map for people getting about um, there's a huge variety of different experiences there. It builds in accommodation, it builds in food. Um, this is, I think, a, a digital um, example here, um, but I think it also ran on outdoor. And this is about the convenience in terms of it's not about how far. So the domestic market is on their doorstep, but you can still have great fun when you're there. Um, Connor mentioned the importance of digital channels, etc., for for planning, but um, it's also important to provide inspiration as well. So I suppose um, for us, that's why we are also on, on TV and outdoor. Um, um, as well, but you can see the, how the likes of the digital and the print here really help with that more focused detail planning and then ultimately getting to the point of conversion. So Connor, if you want to um, move forward. So um, 
as as we did for the last time for our forthcoming campaign, um, we will be developing an industry toolkit, which you can find on tourismni.com. And I would encourage you, if you get a chance, to go in through that because there'll be quite a, a bit of detailed information on that to hopefully help you make the very most um, of, of the opportunities available to you. Um, but I'll just take you through so, some of the uh, information very briefly. So Connor, if you want to go ahead to the next one. And that is me. Um, hopefully that gives you a, a sense of where the domestic consumers are at the minute. Um, and uh, But I, I would say uh, everything moving um, very rapidly, everything changes quickly. Um, so the importance of being agile and flexible in your communications um, is key uh, at that. Um, and that is where the, the digital offering um, can work. I think it's also really important to connect um, with, with Tanya and yourselves. And, and we're very working very close partnership um, with both the Council and Fermanagh and Lakeland. So from that perspective, um, happy to answer any questions at the end. Um, but also I'd like to thank both the Council and um, Tanya again for all of their collaboration in this process. Thanks, Naomi. Um, Tanya, if you're ready, we'll um, move to you next. Yeah, sure. If you want to just put up the, the, the slide um, there. So as um, Naomi said, we've really been trying to work, you know, in collaboration with Tourism NI and obviously reinforce the Embrace the Giant Spirit brand when we have been getting out there talking to our customers. So our communications have very much been in line with the overall Northern Ireland message, but to try to pick out distinctions for us uh, in the Fermanagh Lakelands. And obviously, as you know as well, um, we also do marketing on behalf of Omen the Sparrows under that brand. So obviously we would have um, been undertaking activity under that destination brand um, as well. Um, but basically, you know, when all of this started, and especially in the summertime when things started to come back, we were very conscious with regard to our messaging. And we very much got the impression from visitors uh, and again a lot of the survey work and sentiment work that was was done uh, by tourism ni that people were feeling an awful lot more comfortable traveling to a rural area having the great outdoors having outdoor activity so a lot of our messaging very much geared towards that so any messaging any imagery that we were showing very much tried to engage with the great outdoors um, as I say I have to sort of thank our trade as well I mean we have great engagement with our members with regard to the activity that we were doing I mean during the summertime because there was so much latent demand for when we got up and going again we actually had to spend very little financial budget in our marketing activity. A lot of our activity was focused on PR and on uh, social media. And we had great engagement from our members ourselves with regard to the messaging that you were sending out. And as I say, we spent very, very little money during the summertime because that latent demand was there. And as most of you hopefully know, um, you know, accommodation occupancy right across the board was absolutely fabulous for July, August and even into September. Where we did start to invest our money was coming into the September, October time, into the autumn time. And we very much, you know, say said, right, we need to get a paid for autumn campaign going. And we use specifically uh, TV advertising, some press advertising, but the majority of our spend went into 
digital advertising. And you can see some of the imagery that we've used there. Um, uh, we worked with the same company as um, Tourism NI, uh, BBDO, with regard to um, our sort of design and, and, and messaging. And as I say, this really, you know, was in line with the Embrace the Giant Spirit branding, but trying to pick out what is unique about our area. So things like, you know, a little car ride and you're cruising, surround yourself with serenity, um, somewhere easy to go, an ancient land is right under your nose. So trying to think of things and using imagery that would really appeal to the target segments that we um, were focusing on. And obviously those were the natural quality seekers, the social Instagrammers, the inspiring families in the NI market, and um, then also the open to ideas and so on in the ROI market. So we got you know great coverage right across the board in, in what we were doing. We set some very specific objectives, and I think that's important too. You know, we need to set objectives so that we can measure the impact of everything that was that was done. So like we wanted to increase awareness of Fermanagh Lakelands within our target segments. We wanted to reinforce the message that Fermanagh is a must see destination. We wanted to drive traffic to the website. We wanted to generate bookings for you, attract more visitors to the area, boost online engagement and build a much stronger uh, social media audience. Um, and we felt that certainly with some of the things that we have here, you know, we, we have done that with regard to <clears throat> social media activity. We had a reach of over 113,000, um, over 400,000 impressions, um, page views, three and a half thousand, link clicks, nearly four and a half thousand. Those are just some of the examples. We had a campaign page which was up and running during um, our campaign as well. Um, we had nearly 4,000 views directly onto our campaign page. This was September and just before lockdown, when we went into lockdown again in October. We had nearly 20,000 visitors to our website in those few weeks, and we had nearly 2,500 click-throughs to your own individual websites. So, um, as I say, the majority of the of the activity um, was spent on di digital advertising. And again, we had ads that were targeted to specific segments and to the specific geographic markets, north and south. And, um, you know, it was very, you know, we, we had great engagement. And as I say, we were very happy to work with TNI and making sure that we were consistent in our messaging, but trying to get stand out for our own uh, destination. And as I say, you know, thank you to our members as well that would have engaged with us, especially on social media. And we really would encourage that uh, moving forward to the, the springtime. I mean, obviously at the minute, um, again, we are trying to focus in on what we can promote. So again, the whole sort of great outdoors, the food and drink product, walking, um, you know, you'll see from our social media posts what we have been doing. So, you know, we would encourage you to, you know, engage with us in that. Thanks as well to people that have sent through, you know, offers and and that we've been able to put on our campaign page and also share with you and um, and, and with um, with our members and uh, the the public and i think we have had great uh, engagement and as i say we look forward to working more closely with you and with tourism um ni when it comes to our um spring campaign and again and um, thanks as well to many of you that contributed to our collaborative campaigns because our collaborative campaigns have been funded through you the members and also our own funds and uh, from Anna and Oma District Council. So, um, you know, it's really good that we're able to pool resources in this way because it just gives us a much more meaningful, meaningful budget uh, in order to, to move forward. So if anybody has any questions about the activity that we've done or any suggestions for activity that we should be doing, 
then we're quite happy to um, to engage with you uh, on those platforms. That's great. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I suppose um, at this stage that kind of concludes the presentation, folks. So um, thank you all three of you. Um, I'll start. There are a number of com of questions in the, the chat box. So if you're happy, we'll start with those folks. And if anyone else has anything extra, then um, you feel free to raise your hand or um, put it in the, the chat box. Um, the first one, um, Connor, goes back to your presentation. Um, it is around the knowledge of Fermanagh and Oma not being as good as other areas. And why do you think that is? Of course, I know that everybody knows about Fermanagh and Oma, of course, but. <laughs> well, I mean, what we have, just in response to this, was what we have is the data that uh, assesses, you know, knowledge and awareness. Um, but we haven't asked, why don't you have that awareness? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can we can certainly probably hypothesize with high levels of confidence as to why. Mm -hmm. um, so this is so this is this is my hypothesis. OK, so I would say that for the, in all likelihood, the region is uh, not at the same level of its in life cycle as other destinations. So Giant's Causeway or Belfast or it might be. So I think it's tourism proposition and awareness of that is evolving and strengthening uh, with some pace. But it hasn't reached its levels of knowledge and awareness that there before. So I guess, I mean, my response would be it's not really question. The bigger question is not really why it is not so high, high awareness. The, the more question is how do we drive it? Um, and I think there's I think I think I've seen in the Republic of Ireland market, there's cyclical things that happen that from a development and awareness point of view, the more traditional destinations seem to build up that awareness and knowledge first, but then it starts to cascade out. And my, I suspect that there is going to be, given the given the moves that are made, and being made, there's going to be a significant probably enhancement of the overall knowledge and awareness metric. Because the, bit, the other side of it is, which I think is not true, is to say there isn't knowledge and awareness because it's, just not, it's, it's because there isn't relevant, um, an irrelevant offering. That's not the truth at all. There's probably mm -hmm. a highly relevant offering. There's a very good uh, inventory of experiences and offers. So I think it's about now challenging the current level of knowledge and driving it because I think there is high high relevance and, and we can drive high resonance. Thank you. Um, the second part of that question, I suppose, Connor, is um, you mentioned the important in communication is contemporary and on point. Um, and can you give examples or um, any communication examples that other brands are using? Well, it's always hard to give examples, but all I would say is is that if you take, you have to, you have to think this are we rooted still in, you know, people love carveries, but is that what we want to communicate? Is mm -hmm. that going to resonate, you know, with, with the people that we want? Or is there other dimensions in terms of some sustainability dimension in terms of our offering, whether it be food or whether it be an experience? And that's probably a good example. So we know more and more uh, that consumers in the round are tapping into and trying to understand the uh, uh, sustainability agenda. So if we want to move with the times, we have to but we can find other ways you know yep. what you know so the simple functional and practical things as well in terms of what's our wi-fi access and what's the you know in accommodation at wi-fi access bits in there these are things that people want know and need you know that already and i think the other thing as well is is we have to and, and, and this is before she calls some investment you know people are very visual so the imagery that we ask that we have and present, I think we have to ask ourselves: Is it fit for purpose? Is it is it modern enough? Is it recent enough? Because even a great experience presented in a kind of old or very dated and traditional way takes the luster and sheen off it. So I think from an imagery point of view, there's a strong requirement for very powerful imagery that is seen to be recent and present rather than dated in any way. Thanks, Connor. Um, I think uh, the next question is for you, Naomi. Um, 
and is I don't know if anyone could answer this um is there a prediction of how open the economy will be in March April um, I know you touched on certainly the the sentiment there so maybe if you could expand a bit um Cormac I I really wish I had the answer to that um, unfortunately I don't um I I suppose um we would hope that as the vaccination program rolls out um confidence levels will rise um but no I don't have the answer to that specific question unfortunately Thanks, Naomi. Um, and then again from Cormac for yourself, Tanya, um, would you have any feedback from printed material? Um, again, it's a very difficult, difficult one, but. Is that, are you talking about advertising print or are you talking about, you know, visitor servicing printed material, um, Cormac? Uh, can I talk, Karen? You can go ahead, Cormac, yeah. It's, uh... Uh, printed, yeah, as in um, brochures, uh, yeah, printed uh, physical yeah. material. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, we, we actually... How, how uh, is it useful? Yeah, I mean, certainly it, it's maybe slightly sort of different the last few months because people have been a bit more reluctant to, to hand out, you know, material, you know, to visitors, but we actually are were due to reprint our visitor map. And we actually went out to members and just said, you know, we're planning to reprint the visitor map. We know, you know, the situation that we're in. Would you still feel that there's a need for your visitors to have that information? The visitors are coming to, and staying with you. And, you know, most of the people came, that came back to us and said, yes, from a visitor servicing point of view, we still want to have you know, a visitor guide and a visitor map that we can give out to people that when they're here, we can, you know, give them information that will let them know, you know, where the local restaurants are, where the local activity centres are, where they can experience what they need to experience. So I still think in this day and age, um, with the situation that we're in, there, there is still um, a need for that. Um, but mm -hmm. as I say, over the years, we have, you know, cut down massively on the amount of printed material that we produce, and it's basically now right. a visitor guide and a map, and that's it. I think okay, a lot, sir. Yeah, a lot more people are using, um, you know, other digital means or using their phones to, to find out, um, you know, where they need to go and where they need to see. But because I still think, you know, we're still at the minute, but that could change years to come. Um, I suppose kind of as well at the minute with the, just I suppose as we continue through the COVID-19 situation, I mean, the less touchy, feely things we have and passing between people, mm -hmm. I suppose that people, you know, I suppose going back to that safely and the sentiment is around people are more maybe... Um, happy to use their own devices that you know rather than lifting things and I know suppose that was device the advice at the start was to remove um kind of I suppose printed promotional materials as well so mm -hmm. that's a consideration at the moment isn't it um can I add to um, that Karen? yeah go ahead Connor or Cormac within the same vein um uh, physical material like signposts billboards are they still important uh, in, in communication. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Oh, uh, it just in terms of physical uh, uh, things like the traditional signpost and uh, billboards. I suppose I know they've, they've, some of them are digital now as well. Are, are they important forms of communication? I think maybe from the point of view of giving places a sense of place, um, mm -hmm. um, I think things like that are um, important. Um, I think maybe it can be getting, it can get a little bit, you know, confusing for people. But I think, for example, you know, when you come into Enniskillen Town, you know, um, I think, you know, at least you can see now some of the, the, the things on the, on the, the flagpoles um, yeah. which say, you know, welcome to the island town. And I think, yes. you know, 
giving people more of a sense of place, I think, you know, is important to let them know they've arrived. And I suppose there is things that we could be doing from maybe a Fermanagh point of view or an island town point of view to make that even more obvious. And I think possibly that is something certainly for, for, for Enniskillen that's been um, looked at um, at the minute and possibly even from a from a, um, you know a, a, a destination point of view, you know, that you have arrived in a particular destination. So I think, you know, it's important that visitors see that. And I'm not sure that we have cracked maybe that nut at the moment. Thank you, Tanya. Um, does anybody else have anything there? So I hope that answers your question, Cormac. Um, if there's anyone Thank else, you. no problem. If there's anyone else that wants to come in or add anything. Um, Maybe while you're thinking about that, I just want to, um, I suppose when we're um, talking around the, the relevance of digital platforms, um, just to draw your attention again um, to the multimedia support program that's currently um, open for applications um, from the council, which is an opportunity for professional photography and videography for your tourism business. Um, it is a competitive process, but applications are open until midday on Friday. So if anyone wants to make an application, please do so. Um, and I suppose, again, it is around that kind of aligning with Embrace the Giant Spirit. It's aligning your experiences, your offering with what the, the visitor segments are wanting. So um, it's a good opportunity, I suppose, for the, the businesses out there. Um, and I think unless anyone else is coming in with any questions, I think again, at this point, I'll just thank our presenters again. Um, thank you, Connor, for taking us through the, the three sessions in this uh, domestic market series. Um, as you've referred to numerous times throughout it, it, this the initial work was done obviously prior to COVID, but the situation has only made it more relevant and more important for us to to understand it and digest it and um, bring it into our own work as we as we move forward. So, um, thank you for taking us through that. And um, again, folks, just to let you know, we will. Um, share what we can with you in terms of slides, in terms of um, loading this to the Council YouTube channel so you can um, reference it at a later stage. Um, but again, just thank you for your time. And I think at that, we let you go. Can, can I just oh, say... Just sorry, repeat, Tanya, of course. And, 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 and no, I'm, no, I know the list of people that are on here, so I'm preaching to the converted because they mm -hmm. are all very good at sharing information with us. But yeah. I couldn't emphasise more and, you know, to get this message out to send us information through be it you know social media stuff that we can say on social media or put on the website uh, as i say the people that are on this are actually are all very good at that but um just to keep that coming because we're constantly looking for new content to share across the different media that we're using and as i say you know the visitors want to know about the hidden gems and the specific things that that um, our members and their, you know, the experience that they have. So just keep that, keep that coming because we will share that with um, our target uh, audiences um, variety of media. So thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Yes, yeah, so as Katrina rightly says, good luck to anyone who is reopening on Friday. And as you continue on. All right, folks, thank you very much for your time. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon. I know. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. I'll just save a few left on here. Save that on. Naomi still there is Connor away. Thank you, Tanya. No, that, that was oh, I'm gonna I'm just yeah. gonna stop recording. Uh,